uh, screens for other senescent cells or, or for other right. senolytics, possible senolytics. Would you be able to talk about that? What is the kind of the process like and, and how is it going? Right. So th there are multiple approaches. Um, and so, you know, every lab has their own approach that they seem to favor. The approaches we're taking, uh, I can describe a couple of these and describe what a few other labs are doing. So we have been characterizing a senescent cell, and this could be a senescent fibroblast, a senescent uh, cell from a blood vessel. It could be a senescent immune cell, but you characterize it at a variety of levels, but you look at what genes are turned on, what maybe lipids or metabolites it has. And then you can use bioinformatic analysis to maybe identify pathways which seem to be upregulated in the senescent cell. And we're trying to identify pathways which may be preventing that cell from dying. So this would be one an approach to identify targets that then you identify a drug that, that's against that target that will kill the cell. So that's how we identify cancer drugs as being able to kill senescent cells is through this informatic approach. We saw the same pathways that keep a cancer cell from dying being upregulated in these senescent cells. The main assay we're using though, is we actually make cells senescent in the laboratory. And we can do this on a small plate that has 356 wells. And then you can add 356 different compounds and we can score for those drugs that actually will kill the senescent cells, but not kill a non-senescent cell. And so we can screen hundreds, thousands, and at least theoretically millions of compounds for the ability to kill a senescent cell. There's obviously caveats about toxicity because a lot of things will kill cells. You wanna make sure it's specific for a senescent cell. So we're screening drugs in different, against different types of senescent cells, such as senescent cells from the brain for Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, immune cells for trying to improve immune function, uh, uh, cells from uh, the endothelium, so the blood vessels, fibroblasts, actually dermal fibroblasts because there's a lot of senescence in your skin. Uh, there could be an aesthetic approach that you could be taking to use analytics to improve the appearance of your skin. So, so we're screening through a number of compounds, number of libraries of compounds on different types of senescent cells. So the other approaches people are taking um, is you actually can take something that we know is toxic. And this could be like Taxol that's used for cancer therapy. And you find a way of delivering it to the senescent cell in vivo. So you can use an antibody that recognizes a senescent cell. The caveat there is there's nothing specific on a senescent cell that really makes it 100% distinct from a normal cell. So everything that's on a senescent cell, you might be able to find a normal cell that has it. So there's always a risk for toxicity, but you can deliver cancer drugs that we know just kill, randomly kill cells specifically to a senescent cell. And then the other approaches are is you actually can target the immune system to a senescent cell using the same type of technology. And so you may have discussed uh, on your program about CAR T cells. These are ways of engineering the T cells so it recognizes something on the surface of a tumor cell and it directs the T cell to the tumor to kill it. And this has worked beautifully for B cell lymphomas, uh, a few solid tumors. And so we can do the same thing, target T cells to a, a senescent cell using engineering and, and to have a target something that's on the surface of a senescent cell that isn't on a normal cell. Again, the problem comes about, is there something that is only specific for a senescent cell? And I think the answer is going to be no. So the question is, is what side effects will these approaches have? But so we can stimulate the immune system to kill senescent cells. We can deliver drugs to senescent cells specifically, or we can find drugs that only kill a senescent cell, which is the approach that, that my lab has been taking. So I guess turning to how can we control our senescent cells? Mm. So one thing, so you, you kind of talked already that we you were taking some senolytics. Would, would you mind sharing what, what you're taking? Yeah, and I'm, I'm pleased to. I should just say that I'm not uh, advocating people taking any drugs, um, mm. given the fact we don't yet know the dose in the dosing regimen. Uh, but uh, um, so I guess the, the first thing I should say is that, is that exercise and, and a healthy lifestyle, a good eating regimen, not putting on too much weight, all will, will keep your senescent cells under control. Exercise reduces your senescent cell burden. 
um, eating appropriately, not, you know, uh, not foods with high fats, using healthy foods. Um, they all have benefits. Um, but we did a study uh, when COVID, uh, when the pandemic started, the word had just come out that, that older people were at a higher risk for mortality or severe disease from, from SARS-CoV-2. And so the question came up was, was one of these pillars of aging that's affected as we get older that may be contributing to this, this toxicity, the mortality that was being seen in the older population. So we hypothesized that it was senescence that could be playing a role. And we published a paper in Science and the, and the friendly competitor had a paper in Nature that showed that the senescent cell burden that increases with age contributes to the cytokine storm, this massive nonspecific inflammation that seems to, to drive uh, mortality. And we showed if you gave a senolytic, you could actually reduce death in mice exposed to a mouse virus similar to SARS-CoV-2. And one of the drugs that we use was a flavonoid that's found in, in strawberries and apples and other fruits. It's called facetin. Um, it's sold at GNC and Amazon, Walmart, all the places. And so we saw this reduction in mortality in our mice with facetin. So as the pandemic was breaking, there was no vaccine out there. I started taking facetin um, using a dose that's similar to the clinical trials we started for SARS-CoV-2. There were three trials started by Jim Kirkland to use facetin in older people that have been affected with SARS-CoV-2 to see if it reduces mortality. Those studies haven't been completed. Uh, there's still a few patients left to enroll, but we will know soon if there was an effect clinically. So I started to take facetin then, and I still take a, a, a dose that's similar to the clinical studies that Jim Kirkland's running every two weeks. And do I feel better? Uh, you know, there's a placebo effect, but yes, I, I feel better. My uh, little osteoarthritis in my knee seems to have gotten better. So uh, we've continued to take it. Right. Other people take resveratrol, they take metformin, um, they take uh, NAD precursors to boost their NAD levels. Whether these are going to work on everybody, whether they work at all in humans is still under investigation. So I'm not advocating that people should go out and start taking all of these because we don't yet know safety and dosing. But I think the initial data and some anecdotal data suggests there could be benefits for certain individuals.